everybody. I hope you are doing well. Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast. Welcome to Numbers chapter 3. Don't forget, this is a journey from the end of Exodus all the way to the promised land, and we're going to get there one chapter at a time. And the overall idea of the book of Numbers is learning to trust the Lord. And today what we're going to run into in Numbers chapter 3 is we're going to look at how Moses, through you know God telling him to do this, that they are going to establish the Levites as the protectors of the presence of God, those who are going to serve the Lord. And then as they serve the Lord, they're going to be moving the different things and they're just going to be called into it. But they got to be called and commissioned, right? They, this is what your job is going to be. So we're going to walk through this together today. And I want you to remember as we go through this, the reason why we read the Old Testament is because of the principles set up in the Old Testament is what set up all of us to be able to understand the New Testament. And so I'm curious from this, what is some overall principles that we can pull out of this? Even something what may seem as mundane as listing and numbering the firstborn of the tribe of Levite and all this, what can we pull out of this? And so as we read this together, I want you to think through that with an eye open to Holy Spirit, how can I apply a principle from this to my life? So let's read this together. If you have your NLT Bible open, we're going to read together. Verse 1 of chapter 3 says this, This is the family line of Aaron and Moses as it was recorded when the Lord, by the way, remember from from yesterday, we talked about Lord, capital L-O-R-D, Yahweh, the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai. The names of Aaron's sons were Nadab, the oldest, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the sons of Aaron who were anointed and ordained to minister as priests. But Nadab and Abihu died in the Lord's presence in the wilderness of Sinai when they burned before the Lord the wrong kind of fire, different than had been commanded. Since they had no sons, this left only Eleazar and Ithamar to serve as the priests with their father Aaron. Then the Lord said to Moses, Call forward the tribe of Levi and present them to Aaron the priest to serve as my or as his assistants. And they will serve Aaron and the whole community, performing their sacred duties in and around the tabernacle. They will also maintain all the furnishings of the sacred tent, serving in the tabernacle on behalf of all the Israelites. Assign the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They have been given from among the people of Israel to serve as their assistants. Appoint Aaron and his sons to carry out all the duties of the priesthood. But any unauthorized person who comes too near the sanctuary must be put to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I have chosen the Levites from among the Israelites to serve as substitutes for all the firstborn sons of the people of Israel. The Levites belong to me, for all the firstborn males are mine. On the day I struck down the firstborn sons of the Egyptians, I set apart for myself all the firstborn in Israel, both of the people and of the animals. They are mine. I am the Lord. So what has just happened is, is God has told Moses and Aaron, Hey, look, you got a lot of work to do. Aaron, you you got two sons, but you got to move this entire tabernacle. You got to get it from point A to point B. This is a big thing. You can't do this by yourself. So I'm going to give you the entire tribe of Levi. That is the tribe that actually they came from anyway. So it's like your relatives, they are now on your team. You tell them what to do, and they're going to do it. And they are going to act as the gift of Israel to me, and they're going to serve me. And honestly, they're the ones that's getting out better in this deal. They get to be around the presence of the Lord. I mean, what an amazing thing. All right, here we go. Verse 14. The Lord spoke again to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, and he said, Record the names of the members of the tribe of Levi by their families and clans. List every male who is one month old or older. So Moses listed them just as the Lord had commanded. Levi had three sons, whose name were Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. The clans descended from Gershon were named after the two of his descendants, Libni and Shimei. The clans descended from Kohath were named after four of his descendants, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uzael. The clans descended from Merari were named from the two of his descendants, Mahli and Mushi. These are the Levite clans listed according to their family groups. Descendants of Gershon were composed of the clans that descended from Libni and Shimei. There were about 7,500 males, one month old or older, among the Gershonite clans. They were assigned the area west of the tabernacle for their camp. The leader of the Gershonite clans were Elishaph, the son of Lael. 
These two clans were responsible for the care of the tabernacle, including the sacred tent and its layers of coverings, the curtain and its entrance, the curtains in the courtyard that surrounded the tabernacle and altar, the curtain in the courtyard entrance, the ropes, and all of the equipment related to their use. The descendants of the Koath were encompassed of the clans descended of Amram, Issachar, Hebron, and Usael. There were 8,600 males one month old or older among the Kohathite clans. They were responsible for the care of the sanctuary, and they were assigned the area south of the tabernacle for their camp. The leader of the Kohathite clan uh, was Isaphan and Uzael. These four clans were responsible for the care of the ark, the table, the lampstand, the altars, and the various articles used in the sanctuary, the inner curtain, and all the equipment related to their use. Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest, was the chief administrator over all the Levites with special responsibility for the oversight of the sanctuary. The descendants of Merari were composed of the clans descended of Machli and Mushi. They were 6,200 males, one month old or older among the Merari clans. They were assigned the area north of the tabernacle for their camp. The leader of the Merari clans were Zuriel and Abahal. These two clans were responsible for the care of the frame supporting the tabernacle, the crossbars, the pillars, the bases, and the equipment related to their use. They were also responsible for the posts of the courtyard and all their bases, pegs, and ropes. In the area in front of the tabernacle, where the east of the sunrise was reserved for the tents of Moses and Aaron and his sons, who had the final responsibility for the sanctuary on behalf of the people of Israel. Anyone other than the priests or Levites who went too near the sanctuary was to be put to death. Though Moses and Aaron counted the Levite clans at the Lord's command, the total number was 22,000 males, one month old or older. Now, what in the world? <laughs> so here's the thing. So just like you had the, the tabernacle, then you had the Levites, and you had all the clans around them. Well, then within that, the Levites also had certain sections. And what was happening was, is there was a lot to be moved with the tabernacle. You had the outer curtain and all the tent you know, poles that would go up. Then you had inside the, the outer court area, you had the, the inner court area where there was another tent with all the tent poles. And then with that, you had all of the different furnishings. You had the bronze you know, altar. You had the, the laver. Then you had the ark and all this kind of stuff. And all of that needed to be moved. And so what we just got through reading is those different people groups and the Levites were in charge of different things. I don't know if you've ever been part of like an event that had a lot of moving parts to it. You, know, you had you know, just so many different things going on. Well, what you would have is you usually have like, a, let's say a wedding. You have a wedding coordinator. Well, the wedding coordinator, they're in charge of the whole thing. But with that, you would have someone who's in charge of the flowers, someone who is in charge of the food, someone who's in charge of the entertainment. Then you have someone who's in charge of the bridal party, all this kind of stuff. And all of that creates one wedding, right? Well, that's what this is, is you had different groups in charge of different things so that when it was time to move, they could do it in an organized fashion. That's all that it was just saying. Okay, here we go. Verse 40, let's finish this up. Then the Lord said to Moses, now count all the firstborn sons in Israel who are one month old or older and make a list of their names. The Levites must be reserved for me as substitutes for the firstborn sons of Israel. I am the Lord and the Levites livestock must be reserved for me as a substitute or substitutes for the firstborn livestock of the whole nation of Israel. So Moses counted the firstborn sons of the people of Israel, just as the Lord had commanded. The number of firstborn sons who were one month older or older was 22,273. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the Levites as substitutes for the firstborn sons of the people of Israel, and take the livestock of the Levites as substitutes for the firstborn livestock of the people of Israel. The Levites belong to me. I am the Lord. There are 273 more firstborn sons of Israel than there are Levites. To redeem these extra firstborn sons, collect five pieces of silver for each of them, each piece weighing the same as the sanctuary shekel, each of about 20 geras. Those are just ways of measuring gold back in, during that time. Give the silver to Aaron and his sons as the redemption price for the extra firstborn sons. So Moses collected the silver for redeeming the firstborn sons of Israel who exceeded the number of Levites. He collected 1,365 pieces of silver on behalf of the firstborn sons of Israel, each piece weighing the same as the sanctuary shekel. And Moses gave the silver for redemption to Aaron and his sons, just as the Lord had commanded. Now, 
from this, what we see is, is that God is setting up order so that as they move toward the promised land, they can continue to worship the Lord on the way. He wants to make sure that nothing stops the worship as they go because he wants to be in communion with his people. Now, I don't know what you might want to take away from that, the, the principles that are in this. For me, the principle is that God moves in order. Now, you can organize yourself right out of any kind of joy, right? I heard this old phrase one time. It says, discipline equals freedom. And what that means is, is there's nothing wrong with having order in your life. Nothing wrong with having discipline in your life. And what God just did is God just set up a whole lot of order so that within that order, there's freedom. So, for instance, one part of those Levites, they don't have to worry about the curtains. They don't have to worry about the articles, you know, the, the, all that stuff. All they're in charge of is those tent poles. As another group, they don't have to worry about them tent poles. All they have to be concerned with is the curtains. And there's a third kind. They're like, hey, guys, whenever y'all get the tent set up, you let me know, and then we're going to bring in the ark and all that kind of stuff. That's all they're concerned with. And when everybody does their part, the church, even today, is able to be organized and able to be in freedom and able to worship the Lord in peace. I don't know. I think that's an awesome thing for all of us today. Don't to be afraid of order, but then also not be a slave to it either, but find the freedom that is there. And I love the idea that within freedom or within discipline, there is freedom. All right, let me pray for us. I'm going to read us our theme verse, and then we're going to be done today. And don't forget, the whole book of Numbers is all about learning how to trust the Lord. Let me pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. Thank you, God, that every day, as we discipline ourselves to read your word, you are leading us to freedom in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's word says in Numbers chapter 6, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. I'll see you tomorrow for Numbers chapter 4.